So um, in patients with PNH, the, the mortality uh, in pregnancy has historically been very high in the mothers between 8 and 20 percent uh, and in the babies between 4 and 8 percent and that was before ecolizumab was available. Now since we've been using ecolizumab in patients with PNH, we have um, people who are feeling well, they're no longer having symptoms of the disease, the natural history of their disease in relation to mortality is, is so much improved and because it tends to be a disease of young adults, we're getting young women who, who, who wish to become pregnant or in the UK they often become pregnant and then they come and tell us they're pregnant. So um, what we've studied uh, in I think nine different countries we've, we've got data on 70 different pregnancies um, in patients who have PNH whilst using ecolizumab and it's, um, it's by far the largest study um, looking at, at this uh, subpopulation in such a rare disease and we have very good outcomes. We have no mortality in the mothers um, and, um, and we have all the right number of, uh, of children as well. Um, the, it used to be that, that physicians would say to people don't become pregnant and now uh, certainly in the UK pregnancy is an indication for treatment with ecolizumab therapy. If you look in the literature, there's, um, since ecolism has been available, there's only three case reports, so single individual patients, uh, and one small case series that I, um, certainly the lead centre that we published on in 2010, and that was just in seven patients. And of those seven, um, four of them stopped ecolizumab, uh, sorry, four of them only were treated with ecolizumab in the very early part of pregnancy because they were still in clinical trials. So um, they either discontinued the clinical trial ecolizumab or they, they had a termination because, they, because in clinical trials, in pregnancy is a contraindication. So there's very little data.